So first of all, so uh, you know, obviously, thank you, Ali, for uh, um, taking part in these sort of leaders in EdTech. Um, obviously, there's a number of different interviews that we're planning to do over over the course of the next few months and so on. And I appreciate you're really busy at the moment, especially at the moment because you you know you seem to be constantly uh, every every I think every day I see a number of different schools or maths or academies that you seem to be winning. So yeah, you must be very pleased with that at the moment for sure, um, and, and the way you're, you're performing as a, as a company. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Well, thank you for inviting us, Nick. Um, you're doing good job in the industry we do need some uh tutor like this and that's great uh yes uh schools and maths um it's great to see them uh we of course get excited with every one of them but uh looking in the context of number of schools we are still talking about small numbers um, <laughs> so it's not being greedy it is just reality you we have got 75 percent of schools still plus 75, 75 plus, that they are not cloud. Someone has to really look after those schools. They need to be on cloud. So while we're seeing that, there's still a lot more work to be done. So you'll see a lot more names, I hope, in coming weeks and months and years. Uh, excellent. You know, and, and I think it's good. I think it's good. You know, I know we've discussed it before. And you know, I think it's good for the market to have competition. I think you get more innovation from competition. So. You know, I, I, I think it's a good thing that, you know, there's more company, well, companies as being more successful definitely within this market. Um, the one other thing is, I suppose it's probably the best place to start. So is it right? So it's your 10th anniversary as far as MIS is concerned? As far as MIS, MIS is concerned, correct. Yeah, I appreciate it. I've known that you've been in the education market obviously a lot longer than that. But it's, it's actually quite an interesting question. So, you know, obviously at that time, 10 years ago, yeah, you know, Sims definitely was far more um, was was definitely you know the biggest MIS in the market at the time. Had about eighty two to eighty three percent market share. So what what made you feel that and you know that you wanted to come into this in, into that particular space? And you know why? What do you think you were going to deliver into the market that basically you didn't think Sims was doing? Because obviously you normally go you know everybody goes into a market because they can see a, you know an area where they can differentiate. And they can basically, you know, deliver something of additional value. Uh, so, you know, I know it's a big question, but what, why, why did you enter into the MIS market? Well, if you say why did you enter in 2010, that was when we launched it, mm. launched it in the cloud. So the journey starts much earlier than that. In fact, it's exactly 20 years ago. Wow! It was June 2020. Sorry, 2000. June 2000 that we launched very first prime portal product in the country okay maybe across the world i do not know perhaps in us there may have been some activities in that area so if you recall we did have electronic registration system mm -hmm. which take the attendance and everything else yeah and the way to engage the parents we've done all sort of different tricks uh will you remember the um not text messaging, uh, paging devices that doctors and nurses carry with them. Oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah, of course. Okay, the way we communicated with the parents was initially to give the parents a pager so that any um, student on the watch list, if they do go truant, the immediate uh, parents were informed. Yep. Well, that worked well and to a limited way, but parents want more information and why not all parents to have information about their children. So that's what, when we developed uh, uh, the um, parent portal. And, and that is itself was totally new and it was actually browser based. Yeah. And not browser working locally, it had to be hosted centrally. So it was really, cloud product without knowing it was a cloud product you yep. in year 2000. I don't think the word cloud was spoke of. Yep. And it was a product called My Child at School. Uh, it was covered in BBC. So any time you want to have a look at it, if you just type BBC 2000 Broncom, you'll see the coverage that it had. Yep. It was on television, on ITV and so on. So that's the beginning of our journey what we launched in year 2010. And why we did that from necessity, 
And about the same time, everyone was busy to uh, convert their MIS to next generation. Mm. And what was the next generation? It wasn't browser no, for them. Not. It was Windows. Yeah. Of course, including Sims, including I think RM and all whoever it was, I can't remember every one of them, but yep. they're all busily going Windows. And for me, that was just the wrong thing to do. Um, okay. So the idea of having a browser as, and also we had experience just before I go to that, is in Blackpool, we had a LA who wanted to host our registration system centrally. And we saw the benefit of that quite quickly. That was mm -hmm. early 2000s. So taking those couple of steps and decide to have MIS that's centrally hosted without server was the thing to do. We can't do that with Windows. So we set our mission, yeah. but started in 2004 the developments and with a lot of piloting and so on, it was launched. First installation probably was around 2009, but on the cloud, uh, we uh, have got 2010 as the earmark year. And wow. that's um, how it started its life. So to sum it up, it was gonna be different. Secondly, also we saw that many uh, MI suppliers were um, all starting on the primary school side. There was only two that really made good success on the secondary school side, that was Sims yeah. of course, and Simis. But as the time went, as you can see, they were gonna be legacy and they needed to move across. Yeah. And that was the other reason. We saw that no one was going to be able to fulfill the secondary school side of the MIS the way that we could, because our background was all secondary school side. Yeah. Yeah, with 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 um, your parental portal and, and with the and with the lesson monitoring or the lesson sort of solution. Yeah. So yeah. really, uh, the 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 um, that's not uh, then um, surprise that today our one of the biggest strengths we have got is understanding and being able to deliver all the requirements of secondary school. Yeah. And by the human nature, not we can fulfill what is being, what is out there, let's say with Sims 7 or Sims, the school by very nature also asking, well, can you do also this as well? So yeah. not we have fulfilled what any other products, legacy products can do today. We have gone way beyond what they can achieve. Okay. So ultimately you're saying, so actually in some ways you, you jumped a sort of where everybody else was going into Windows 7, you basically identified that into the future based on people liking your portal and people wanting to host your lesson by lesson sort of registration system. That actually, it, that's where the future is going to be. The future is going to be in the cloud ultimately, even though the word cloud wasn't being used at the time. And that's how you, you know, so, uh, so the innovator of MIS. Well, I can. One thing I can tell you, I was one of the most unpopular managing directors ever. <laughs> and I told people, um, everyone's saying Windows is the way to go. You can get developers, that's what we know, and so on. When I said, no, it's going to be browser. And you talk about having a boardroom of people all, all, all saying, are you sure we don't, we don't want to do this in Windows? It's going to be a fraction of the cost, a fraction of the time. And that's what everyone is happy with and I said no 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 it has to be browsers and you can see what where we're going to go with this sure. so anyway so long it was it has taken we started year 2004 uh, as I mentioned it must have taken a good five years at little to pilot five years wow and, and I'm guessing and, and, and are you so you had those five years to pilot and, and you got some good feedback uh, I'm guessing. five years to develop and okay. pilot and uh it was year 2010 that we also put it on to cloud cool excellent so so i don't know if i should be asking this question now because it feels like you've answered it but um so probably at then I, I guess 10 years ago you know you came out obviously with a browser-based solution 
there were actually other companies then starting to move down that direction, like Rabas and so on. Um, where, where, and, and Scholar Packs. So whereabouts? So where do you now see where you differentiate in the market? Because you now, you know, obviously now the market has formed into, you know, the the, the, the challenger MISs. All of them are are cloud based. There's not, you know, the only person at the moment who's client true. server is Sims. So well, where do you differentiate within the cloud? Okay. Well, first of all, let me tell you this, Nick, that our competition is not other cloud suppliers. Okay. 75 plus percent of the market is people that do not quite appreciate cloud. Our, my mission, and I've been talking to all colleagues, mm. from Sklorpark uh, to Arbor and others, James and people assets, that we should be working together to educate the market that they should be moving. They can move any one of them, any one yeah. of us. But most importantly, that is the that is the what it is important to get the message across that cloud is here. They should be moving now, or not tomorrow or later. So that's 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 what is important. But yes, at the end of the day, whether it's cloud or non-cloud, but of course it's cloud we're talking about. Uh, what is our differentiation? I can see that in two level. One is company, mm. um, and this is not what we think is we ask and people tell us what is that um, they choose Broncom. Certainly listening to others and so on. Broncom is a listening company. We listen and react very, very fast. Um, we only work in education. Um, we've been very dedicated for 30 years in education alone. Yeah. Because uh, in nineties we started uh, as you know not even electronic registration, but as um, the first generation of software started, we providing schools a DOS-based multi-user system. So we started the hardware side, providing platform for people like Sims and Script and all other that do not exist even today. Um, so then we moved to electronic registration, which we win. We won a lot of our awards and including Queen's Award. Um, and then the Prime Portal and um, um, MIS. But we've been always education, dedicated and uh, technology wise, we always let the market from that point of view as well. Um, the other thing about our company is the onboarding. We certainly got really that uh, very well uh, defined, it's seamless, it is painless. And it is the thing that most um, people uh, invariably is worried about. So when they hear that we got really, really that well uh, uh, formed and we do that uh, painlessly, people do see that uh, big differentiation. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned, leading the market with technology, that's definitely not in the marketplace. We do not copy others. We certainly bring to the market in new things. Um, one typical example is how we um, embedded Power BI within our products. So sure. a lot of people see Power BI as what Excel done to in the office in many ways with the numbers. Now you've got the visualization of the data and Power BI is the tool to do that. But rather than having this import and export between the, these tools, we have embedded within Broncom MIS and the finance part. part. So that sort of innovation is, is something stands out, of course. What I believe is no one else has got that today. Okay. Um, and also we are financially very sound company, and that's very important, especially you heard uh, our colleague Phil Neal saying what, how important it is. Of course it is, because cloud supplier means that your data is with the, the, the supplier. If anything goes wrong, where is your data? Who's going to mm. control it? Who is going to allow you to transfer it and so on? And so to be robust, especially in this, you know, with COVID and so on, is vitally important. And give that confidence to the, uh, the customers. So that's on the, um, on the um, company side. Uh, Product-wise, um, I mentioned to you the, the second school. That's vitally important yep. because having a primary school and try to build up to secondary is 
it just doesn't meet the requirements because the underlying structure, the foundation, just not there. So we have seen a number of companies, and including people that left the market, like Pearson, Elon, they yep. never, never managed to crack the secondary school side. Sure. Uh, they were trying. They never said we don't have a school solution. And some suppliers chosen that, which is, I think, wise. They said, we will not do secondary school, do yep. primary school, and they're doing very well. Um, so I think fr fr from product point of view, I think we really, really have to differentiate ourselves from that. Um, Eston Mats, yes, um, they helped us great deal to put us on a platform yep. and we looked after them very well and again as a company we one that has got real foundations with that and we developed the products not just simply as a silo MIS in school but have mud wide um, reporting and accessibility and control when you want it mm. uh, distributing assessment templates and so on you can do that from the center you don't have to do it individual school by school and again power bi can suck all the information have it yeah. in front of you you don't need to provide a template for each school for power bi to uh, send you the information so these are the if you like as a product side where yeah. we really differentiate ourselves so i've also noticed probably probably um uh, another area is and you touched on it just a minute ago is is that sort of you've got the finance piece in there as well so you, you've almost consolidated a lot of schools and academy needs as well uh, there's not many that have all the different solutions correct uh in the marketplace we do believe we have got the most comprehensive footprint mm -hmm. so okay. starting with finance that differentiates big time because special special local authority uh schools will have alongside your let's say sims you've got from a six and yeah. how do you transfer them you just can't say oh i can deal with the mi side and you you go and find out find a solution for for the finance side we need both at the same time also from one company as well that gives a lot of comfort to the uh, school and the local authority so we uh, uh, have taken care of that uh, the other one, a lot of uh, in the marketplace, it is a small section, but again, it shows how much we listen to our customers. Mm -hmm. It's the um, uh, six form share, six form solution. Yeah. Now, there are not many of them around, yep. but nevertheless, when school need it, they really need it because they got used to it and so on. And some of them did not work as well as uh, they should have been working. So we have got a solution for that, for instance. Okay. Um, within a uh, primary solution, and that's why probably primary is also a Broncom solution, is we got built-in a primary tracker. Just to give you one example, uh, in the last 12 months, uh, Thursday School Matt Hamwick has got 29 primaries and one secondary, yeah. and he's chosen Broncom. Because yeah. when they saw how much uh, we have uh, took note of primary school requirements as well, um they've chosen us so okay. from that point of view having the footprint that brings it together and we call it one-stop shop yeah of course uh, we do not dictate that so we're not saying if you sign up to broncom you must give up your favorite xyz uh third party you can still carry on using them but where a mat or school want to save and they see integration of the data yeah uh, the benefit of that what that means is data is at one place so that itself provides a comfort on gdpr side because you do have a problem with that as you can appreciate yeah uh, sure. data being in different places when someone do wants information you don't have to go to different places to pull the information they're all uh, uh, in the mis and, and do you think you're going to continue that sort of approach so are you going to build other solutions or do you think you now have got yeah, what you we are demand based uh, if uh, maths and schools want these things it makes sense uh, we would uh, we, we, we not here we don't sit and say what else can we do it's more you get so much request from different people yeah. they know that we are a listening company so they don't stop asking for different things and if it makes sense if it fits um, majority of our customers we will provide so cool.
Um, actually, just one point, because you just sort of touched on it where you said um, you've got solutions for sixth form. Would you ever, would you, do you think you would ever go into the further education? Do you think you go to further education colleges or do you, do you find that's then stretching too much? Um, you may say Broncom is ambitious and Broncom, is, <laughs> but I can tell you with 75 plus percent of the market is still non cloud you have a lot of work to do. <laughs> sure. And it is, it is not just the numbers, not just the turnover, it is satisfying those customers well. So yes, six form, we, we used to have a great deal of uh, user base in six forms. Uh, for instance, but really today our focus is in schools.